and product lines, expanded showroom and product lines. You'll find it all at Westside Decorating Center. Good morning to you. I'm Art Lewis. I thank uh, Jonathan and Christiana for filling in yesterday. And uh, we uh, were having a uh, fun day. It was, man, it was magnificent yesterday. Uh, played golf in the rescue ministries, uh, golf outing at the fortress, and they raised $114,000 to help the homeless and those in need. It was a very, very wonderful day and uh, had a, a great time. But I thank uh, Jonathan and Christiana for stepping in. Uh, back in the saddle again today, and we have open phones today for the whole show. 989-752-6111. Going to touch on a number of things. I want to touch on something you just heard in the news that has to do with uh, General Motors and reevaluating their uh, EV or electric vehicle targets. They're pulling back their electric vehicle production targets this year by about 50,000. They originally were going to produce 200 to 300,000, and now the new number is 200 to 250,000. And they still believe they can achieve variable profit positive. You're saying to yourself, what? Well, what that is, variable profit is do they make money on the car against the cost of building the car? But it does not take into account any other corporate expenses like the overhead of buildings and corporate staff and all of that. So they call it variable profit because if it costs them, um, you know, a, a dollar to build the car and they make a dollar one on the car, that's variable profit. But in actuality, it does not include the cost of running the corporation, which is also normally included in the cost of a vehicle. And that becomes the profit of the company because you can make a variable profit, but not be profitable. Because if you don't take into account all the costs of being a business, then you're losing money. So it just goes to show that the American consumer can dictate, even though these things are being shoved down our throats. And there was, there have been a couple of stories out in recent days about how we have become fascinated with hybrids. And I don't know how long you've been listening to this show or me talking about EVs and, and other forms of uh, power. But how many times have I said if I were in the market today, it would be for a hybrid where I could use the electric side of the vehicle around town just to piddle around, go a few miles here, a few miles there, but not be afraid of driving long distances and running out of electric power because you have the alternative. I really thought that instead of jumping over the hybrid market and going straight to EVs, and even though there have been some hybrids around over the years, I really thought the hybrids would be, you know, the cat's meow when it comes to this stuff. And now it's proving that it is. But General Motors, I mean, they are committed. Their retail EV lineup includes the GMC Hummer pickup and SUV, the Cadillac Lyric, the Chevrolet Blazer EV, the Chevrolet Equinox EV, Silverado EV RST, GMC Sierra EV, and coming soon, the Cadillac Escalade IQ, and the very, very expensive Cadillac Celestic. Uh, and I would bet that others are going to do the same thing, that other manufacturers are going to adjust their productions according to the marketplace because there's no point in building what you can't sell. Now, has EV sales plateaued? Probably not because the other thing that holds back EV buyers is the price. 
It's often been said when EVs offer the same range, the same avail availability of charging stations as there are gasoline stations, and the same or comparable pricing to gasoline-powered cars, then EVs might take off again. But that's to be seen. Right now, EVs are more expensive. They're more expensive to build. They do have lower ownership costs in what you spend per month. And they do have some tax credits for now. But GM will bring plug-in hybrid technology to its lineup by 2027. And I wonder why it's taking that long. They've already built hybrids. They've had hybrids before. But they weren't plug-in hybrids. They were generator hybrids. And as I've said, I would still prefer a hybrid over an EV. Time will tell what happens in the marketplace. We begin on the phones this morning, and Scott's in Saginaw. Scott, good morning. Hey, morning, Art. Yeah, I wanted to address a couple of your callers from before who identify as Christian. And uh, to remind people, when we're voting for a president, we're not voting for a pastor to lead us into the promised land. What we're doing is looking at Democrat, Republican, and we're picking who probably has the least amount of flaws, because everybody is flawed, regardless of your Democrat or Republican. Nobody's perfect. Got that. So I just want to look at I want to look at three different things between Biden, Trump and the word of God. Biden says God is wrong. You can marry whoever you choose to. Donald Trump agrees with God. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Joe Biden says God is wrong. You can be whatever sex you choose to be. Donald Trump agrees with God. They are male and they are female. Joe Biden says God is wrong. And he goes on. He says, as long as I'm president, people, not women, but people will have the right to abort their children. Donald Trump chooses to agree with God. Thou shall not murder. So there's three things right there for a Christian or somebody who identifies as a Christian to look at. And if you choose to go for a man who supports homosexual marriage, the murder of children, which Jesus are you serving? Mm hmm. Uh, interesting comments. I, I've often, I, I mean, historically at least, I've tried to keep religion out of politics, but it, it's, it gets harder and harder. Uh, I can remember uh, Nancy Pelosi walking out of a meeting and somebody saying, why do you hate Donald Trump? And she turned around and said, I don't hate Donald Trump. I was brought up a good Catholic, learned not to hate. I would have immediately then said, how can you support abortion? Immediately I would have said that. But nobody did. Mm -hmm. Nobody did. But uh, I just, uh, I, I have reached a point in my life, and I'm older than you are, Scott. I just reached a point in my life where uh, uh, I don't try and explain people's religious views anymore. I, I, I gave up. Can't do it. And it's it's a matter of it's a matter of you know and, and and in politics it becomes a matter of convenience many times, and I, I'm I'm sorry to see that happen, I really am. Oh, so am I. Well, for me, see, sometimes you don't know if the politician is being truthful or not. So, but when you look at their past and you find out their stance, I can then say, okay, at least this person was trying to do something that I agree with or disagree with. Oh yeah, absolutely. So oh I, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely. Why I'll align, that's why I'll align my politician <clears throat> to to God. I remember when I went and met uh, Ken Horn for the first time. It was the first political thing I ever went to. And I talked to him, and I says, are you going to keep Jesus Christ in prayers? And he just looked at me and he says, yes. And I said, okay, you got my vote. And that's yep. all I need to ask him. Yeah, well, uh, you know, so yeah. However, I will tell you this, uh, because I know some. There are Democrats who also want to keep jesus christ in prayers and and uh you know there there are you might not agree but there are democrats 
who are not pro-abortion. They can believe other things in their party and dispute that. And this goes to my belief that a lot of people have varying views on a whole bunch of issues. But anyway, so much. Gotcha. Well, it, it, all right. well I won't stick on the whole religious thing too much, but here's another one. Real quick. I've seen a commercial now where uh, women are coming out saying Donald Trump took the right from them. Yeah, right I saw that. Because of abortion. And I'm thinking, no, what Donald Trump did is he took the power out of the hands of the court and put the, hands, put the power into your hand. Into the people's hands. Yeah, in the states. So just, it, yeah, and so the people didn't lose their right. They actually gained a right to vote for something. Yeah. What a bunch of dumb people. Have a good day. All right. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye-bye, Scott. We'll be back. Stormmaster Exteriors. All right, we're back with you here on WSGW, the Art Lewis Show with an open format right through 1130 this morning. And Russ is up in Bay City, so we will go there to talk to Russ this morning. Hello, Russ. I think one thing I'm having a huge issue with are these people who blame Israel or us for civilian death because Muslim warriors use women and children as human shields. I mean, they have since the day of Muhammad. This is nothing new. This is part of their military tactics. And they use the civilian deaths as propaganda. And and it it still works today. And I don't get why it still works. Why do people blame the people the Muslims attack? Because once they get done attacking, they run and hide behind their women. Uh, well, because you're not going to change 2,000 years of history. I mean, that's the answer. I'm not talking about the 2,000 years of history. I'm yeah, you are. People no, you are. You've said that they've used it before. Israel and blaming America for how they behave. Yeah, well, that's... What I'm telling you, that's part of the history. Others have it's been ridiculous. blamed. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, how Manchurian candidate is it? They literally pick children and women up and hide behind them. And it makes me sick to my stomach. It, it does. It, how, you can't call yourself a man when you do that. I'm sorry. You are a coward. And, and, and you deserve to be castrated. Okay. You don't, you don't eat. You haven't earned your genitalia. Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. And here's Susan in Bay City. Susan, good morning. Good morning, Art. You know, it comes down to the difference between these policies and what both last two callers said, good and evil. And I just, uh, of course, I watch Bill Riley. comes on every evening. I have the no spin news. and. Anyway, last night, he had a couple of really good clips on. Um, He got one from the Freedom of Information Act where Nancy Pelosi's daughter had edited out for the January 6th committee. And he had her in the back of the limo saying that, oh, she should have took the 20, the the extra National Guard. And this is going to fall on her because this was her responsibility for the January 6th and the Capitol being breached. She's right there on tape saying it, and they just recently got this clip. It was Alexander Pelosi that edited it out, and of course, nobody's seen that point. And then um, also he had um, President Biden yesterday, or whenever it was the Juneteenth day when they had the celebration on the White House lawn, and there's a lot of people dancing, and there's music kind of thing, and they're all swaying. And poor President Biden is standing there. And the word and the look in his face is totally vacant. He doesn't know where he's at. He's not moving. And he's scared to death standing there. And um, it's just, oh, my gosh, why don't people see this? And when your last caller was talking about this and you said, yes, we can't erase 2,000 years of history. But what we can erase is the fake media that's allowed to report this. And No, you can't. What it, How are you going to do that? Well, there can be laws that they have to back things up. I mean, no, you can't they can't. Just, not that's not, it, the Constitution says a free press. It doesn't say the press has to be good. It doesn't even say the press has to be neutral. Now, I, I, as, a, as a journalist, I've always believed in neutrality. I've believed in checking my sources and all of those things. But the Constitution doesn't say that, does it? Well, you it know, says a free press 
and that means yep. uninhibited by the government in any way. But you know that's not true, though, because no, that is you true. Have Google and you have you have Google, why can everybody be censored? Um, see, censorship now takes place, and they just what they do is a lot of your callers call, and they'll have this little clip that they heard two or three words from something, and that must be the extent of their extension their uh, their uh, attention span because they take that and run with it. And it's that's why I listen to Bill O'Reilly. Well, you choose who you listen to, and you have that freedom to do that. Yes, but you know what? I I try to listen to everything, and I listen to the ones, and I pay attention to the ones that back everything up, that they just don't spout a bunch of stuff. And even when I hear throughout the day all the different channels and different newspapers I get, it's always so interesting to listen to Bill O'Reilly and have him come on and correct it all and give you the sources. As or how I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to caution you. And I understand and I like Bill O'Reilly. I've talked to Bill many, many, many times. But he still has a viewpoint. And he comes to it with that viewpoint. Now, I think... He does a very good job in examining the facts and presenting the facts as he sees them, but he is no different than any other journalist. He comes with a viewpoint oh, I, in this case. I greatly, I greatly. I, that, that's fine, and, and that's fine. Yeah, and the only reason why is because after watching him, he accredits everything. This one said this. Here is the. Yeah, no, I understand that. I understand that. I didn't say he was a and bad he, journalist. I just said he still yeah, comes with a viewpoint. Yeah. But there's not that many good journalists out there anymore. They just, they're talking. Well, yeah. and, uh, I blame it on know. social media. A lot of it on social media. Absolutely. It's changed. It's changed Absolutely. things. All right. Absolutely. Susan, I'm going to run. Are. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye, Bye-bye now. And we say good morning to Gene in Saginaw Township. Counselor, good morning. Good morning, Art. Long time. Ah, <laughs> I wonder what would trip you. <laughs> Oh, nothing much. I was just sitting here this morning uh, thinking about all the political rancor in our country today, and I was thinking of a, a very kindlier and gentler time here in Saginaw when uh, Mayor uh, uh, Dewey Stearns and his a Republican mayor, Dewey Stearns, and his wife Henrietta and my wife could go around Saginaw and talk to businesses and individuals, raise money for the Japanese Cultural Center, and a time when uh, Al Schmidt, Rock River Republican, uh, and I could fly to Vietnam and come back and write together an article for the Saginaw News together, and when is equally... Well, you know, Gene... Conservative, when is equally conservative... Son Greg yeah. Schmidt and I could oh, yeah. have a beer together and not throw it yeah. in each other's face. But you know, Gene, have the times really changed? Maybe some of the individuals have. Uh, you and I, you and I, probably disagree a lot on some political issues. Yeah, but we can go out and enjoy dinner together every time. Yeah, and, and you know there are a lot of people like that. Yeah. It's it's the noisemakers on both sides that get all the attention. Yeah. And they make it seem like the world is falling apart. Yeah. I don't think it. Now we have problems. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, but we we can still find plenty of people to associate with that we may not agree with. And and as a as a as a have a good time together. And as a political <laughs> entity, we've forgotten how to do that. And that yeah. that worries me. And you're absolutely right about that. And I'm just yeah. pointing out that there are some of us though who get beyond that. I have yeah. a lot of friends who I politically disagree with, uh, but but they're wonderful people. And that's all I look... When I judge somebody, I judge them on their character and who they are and, and how I view them. I don't Same go here. to somebody and ask what their politics is. Same here. Yeah, and I know that. I know that. Yeah. I mean, you would yeah. not be the godfather of my dog if it were not the case. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Gene, well, I love you and Yoko to, to pieces. Say a few words this morning. Well, but, I'm uh, glad you did. Enjoy your program. Thank yeah. you. Take care. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, 
I've known Gene for many, 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 many decades, actually. Uh, terrific lawyer. Uh, was involved in the state bar at a very high level. And uh, just a, a, a wonderful man and his wife, Yoko Mosner. Uh, uh, if not for her, we would not have a Japanese tea house and, uh, and, uh, and have a wonderful relationship with Tokushima, Japan. And, uh you know, and, and for the culture, you know, and I, I think it's it's important that we just had, for example, the city of Saginaw just uh, went into a sister city relationship with Barry, Ontario. And, you know, I, I was talking to someone uh, about it and they said, well, how many, you know, how many sister cities do we need? Well, if it, if it furthers cultural understanding, fine many as you want we got to take a break and then we'll return lines are open for you at 989-752-6111 let me talk about quick lane freeland right next to my car dealer mcdonald ford uh you know quick lane freeland if you wonder what it is and they call it quick lane because it's a quick place to go to get all of your routine maintenance you know maybe oil changes brakes tires batteries and on any make and model, not just your Ford. They work on Chevys, Fords, Toyota, Honda, Jeep, Dodge, you name it, they work on it. They keep them all in tip-top shape. They can also do something. They can protect you in the cabin of your car from germs and odors and all of those things. They have something called Friggy Fresh. Friggy Fresh is something they insert into your circulation system in your car, your ventilation system. It kills the germs in the system, reduces odors and all of those things that make for a healthier interior of your car. It only costs 20 bucks. It only takes 10 minutes. No appointment necessary. You just stop in and ask for Friggy Fresh. But while you're doing that, you might have them check out your cabin filter because, you know, in newer automobiles today, all these cars have cabin filters, and they're usually situated behind the glove box. And if you don't change that filter, you're asking for foul air in your car. So stop in to Quick Lane Freeland, ask about Friggy Fresh, ask them to check your cabin air filter, and keep your vehicle in tip top shape at Quick Lane Freeland next to McDonald Ford. Modern businesses thrive on tech. All right, back with you here on WSGW. Well, let's see how I can uh, <laughs> scare you to death right now. Uh, the CDC, that's the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, tells us there is a new COVID variant called KP.3. And that is the new dominant variant across the state. And uh, the CDC says they're tracking the sars cov 2 variant KP.3. And uh, for the two-week period starting on May 26th, ending June 8th, uh, it accounted for 25% of the COVID cases in the U.S. And, you know, we don't hear much about the COVID cases anymore, but I had a friend just a week ago, came home sick from work and had COVID. So it's still out there, but not to the degree, obviously, that it was when we all got shut down. So what is the KP.3 variant? Uh, it is a similar strain to some of the others. Uh, apparently, it's a sublineage of the JN.1 strain. I think there's so many. I don't I have no idea what I'm talking about here when it comes to these things. I'm just reading them. Uh, the symptoms for KP.3 are identical to some of the other strains. They include fever or chills, cough, sore throat, congestion or runny nose, headache, muscle aches, difficulty breathing, fatigue. A new loss of taste or smell. That one would be unique to it. Brain fog. Feeling less wakeful and aware. Hmm. 
and gastrointestinal symptoms, upset stomach, mild diarrhea, vomiting. Are those not some of the symptoms of almost every other kind of flu and illness you can think of? But they say that list does not include all the possible symptoms. And how do you protect yourself? Well, you know what they're going to tell you. The CDC suggests everyone that is six months old and older get the 2023-2024 COVID-19 vaccine, helping to protect against serious illness from COVID. It does not say you won't get COVID. It just says it helps protect against the serious illnesses. I know it has been a very, very controversial subject in the past. Uh, personally, as I've said many, many times, when I get sick, I don't go to a radio talk show host. I don't go to a politician. I go to my doctor. And I trust my doctor to give me the proper advice. I have had all of the COVID vaccines. I have zero reaction to them. And I've never had COVID. So that's my anecdotal evidence. There are those people who have had the vaccines and gotten COVID, and that's their anecdotal evidence. But considering how many millions and millions and millions of people got the vaccine versus the number of people that actually got COVID, I'm betting on the vaccine, but that's me. And I know there's a lot of people who are anti-vax these days, but uh, I'm not one of them. All right, a break, and then we'll get back, and we'll get to uh, Michael in Bay City. We'll do that right after these notes. Michael, hang on. Rock's best plays us. Back with you here on the Art Lewis Show, and uh, Michael is up in Bay City. Michael, thanks for waiting. Good morning. Good morning, Art. Morning. I have a one subject. I have a one subject that I never heard on your show, and uh, this is something like uh, on the line of abortion, where women's rights are being taken away, and people are saying that you're killing the babies and so forth and so on. And you've got all these Bible people, uh, Bible thumping all this stuff, and now uh, thou shall not kill and all this. Well, here's one thing: what about vasectomy? Isn't that killing the babies too then? No. Shouldn't men be not allowed to have a vasectomy? No, because you haven't created the child. Ah, but it takes two to create a child. It does. It does, yes, absolutely. So if a man But that's gets no a different that's no different wait, 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 wait. That's no different than contraception for a woman, is it? <laughs> Well, that that also covers the contraception for women too. They are in uproar about that. Yeah, but it my takes, biggest problem it, is that it, you're taking women's rights. Well, the sperm and the egg have to get together before you have a child. <laughs> I understand that. I understand, but but if you walk in the doctor's office and you say I want to have a vasectomy, you're going to get it. There's yeah. no ifs, ands, or buts. Right. A woman walks in and she wants an abortion, and the uh, government's involved in that. No, it's different. And so it's that's different. It's very different. It would be. It would be. That's that's sort of apples to oranges. If you would say, if you would say that a man could have a vasectomy, or a woman could have uh, an insert, birth control insert placed in her, uh, yeah, then okay, then that's apples to apples because they're both contraception in a way. But, but uh, I am talking. I am talking about your rights. Yeah, but it's, you have a right to have that, and a woman does not have a right to have the other one. How come? Well, because they're not the same, <laughs> and they're, 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 it's apples to oranges. But also, the other thing well. is the other thing is in the reversal of Roe v. Wade, and I'm not talking here pro-abortion, anti-abortion, or anything like that. What they did was gave the right to decide to the state. They actually brought the rights closer to the individual than take them away. Rather than the federal government dictate, they've allowed the states to decide. But, yes, I, I understand all that. I just do not understand that I have the right to do that 
but a woman cannot choose what she wants. It's just not the same. Well, how do you figure it's not the same? If she goes in the office and wants an abortion and the government and the doctor says you can't have it, and I go in the office and I can get it. Be- because one's a preventative <laughs> and one is after the fact of the creation. No, we're, we're not on the same page. I got a right to do that. Women doesn't have a right to do whatever <laughs> she wants. Okay. That's, that's it. You, well, we're going to ag- we're gonna agree to disagree on how we view it then. All right. Well, all right. thank you. That's all I got to say. All, all right, Michael. Glad you called. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. It's, you know, and it's it's interesting how every so often, not every election cycle, but many election cycles, abortion raises its head and becomes an issue. More so now after the Supreme Court obviously reversed Roe v. Wade uh, and threw it back to the states. So let's talk about the fact that they have not taken away. View it this way. Let me see if I can can, throw a monkey wrench in it just for the heck of it. They've not taken away a woman's right to an abortion. Maybe in her locale, that may be true. But there's nothing stopping her from going to another locale where it's available. So have we taken away the right or have we simply taken away a particular location To utilize that right because that's what it is really and we've already had cases in the news of women leaving Texas for example to go someplace else so yeah it may not be as easy you may have to travel but the procedure is still available they did not outlaw it They reversed Roe v. Wade, but they did not outlaw abortion. They simply said it's a state's issue. But it is a passionate issue and will remain so. And there will be single-issue voters who only vote on that particular issue. It's the way it's been. And it will continue to be that way. All right, we're going to take our last break and close out this hour, but we will be back with lots more open phones on the other side. Who sells your soybeans over? Game mornings at 9 on 100.5 and 790. News Radio WSGW. And that'll do it for the first hour of the Art Louis Show. But coming up next hour, more open phones, more good topics to talk about, all ahead this morning. But first, news from CBS, the national and international news. Michael Perch will be along with the local report, brings you up to date on the region and the state. And then we'll be back. Broadcasting from the proposed numerous changes to the proposal that was on the table. Some of those changes are workable, he said. Some are not. And some go beyond what Hamas had previously accepted. It's time for the haggling to stop and the ceasefire to start. It's as simple as that. Lincoln said the U.S. is determined to bridge the gaps. Breaking news from the NBA. The man who inspired the league's logo has died. Three-time Hall of Famer Jerry West was 86 years old. The Clippers call him the personification of basketball excellence. They say he died with his wife by his side. No let-up for flooded-out Floridians. CBS meteorologist David Parkinson. The rain will continue to fall in torrents in Florida today. We already saw record rainfall on Tuesday, including in Sarasota, where they picked up almost four inches of rain in just one hour. That was a record for Sarasota. It's something that you'd expect climatologically to see you know, maybe once a millennia. It's high school graduation day for survivors of the Sandy Hook school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. It really forced us to grow up so fast when we didn't need to. Grace Fisher was a first grader when a gunman opened fire, killing 20 classmates and six educators. 
The Pope is urging priests to make it snappy. Non deve andare oltre gli otto minuti. During his weekly audience at the Vatican, the 87-year-old said they should keep homilies to no more than eight minutes to prevent congregants from nodding off. And more women are saying yes to Namaste. New numbers from the CDC show nearly a quarter of women in the U.S. now practice yoga. More than a fourth of them say they do it to treat or manage pain. The S&P is up 60. This is CBS News. And now, a list of things from Progressive Insurance. Home, auto, boat, motorcycle, RV, ATV. Progressive protects them all. Learn more about bundling at Progressive.com. Flooding is becoming an increase. Center, uh, and uh, find out what's uh, happening with all the new product lines and everything. Uh, this hour, we will be hearing from Terry Henney, who is out, uh, I believe, I think he's at the Anderson Enrichment Center. Uh, where uh, they have their art fair going on. We will uh, find out when we hear from him (laughs) and know for sure where he is, but I'm suspecting that's where it is. So we will uh, do that a couple of times this hour, find out what's happening there. Meantime, open phones for the hour, 989-752-6111. Put you in touch with us, as Carl has done, and we say good morning to Carl in Saginaw. Carl, good morning to you. Good morning, Art. Beautiful day here. Oh, man, I'll tell you, beautiful day, and yesterday was just absolutely perfect. Wonderful, wonderful weather. But don't get used to it. <laughs> no, it's going to get hot. Oh, it's yeah. It's going to get hot. And yeah, yeah. Yes, all of that. But, uh, uh, Art, uh, the last couple of times that we talked, you said something to the effect of, well, you don't listen to what Trump says. And um, honestly, I think maybe it's time to start listening. Um I don't know if you saw any of his rally over the last weekend in Arizona, I think it was. Not a word. Um, you didn't You didn't see anything about that? Not a word. Well, I knew it happened, but I didn't pay any attention to it. I don't, I don't pay any attention well, okay. to those rallies either way. Well, Anybody. Okay, well, well then I'll, let me bring you up to date on some of the things he did say. Um, he went off on his teleprompter stopped working he went off on a tangent about would you rather be killed by a shark or electrocuted in the water for a long long time he talked about that um at at one point in his speech he said quote i don't care about you i just want your vote unquote this is what trump said um now, I'm sure some of his supporters are going to say, oh, he's just joking, or he's, he, you're taking that out of context or something like so that. So let me ask but, you a question. <laughs> How is that any sure. different than uh, uh, Biden's flubs and some of the things Biden says? I mean, listen, I have said, and I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, when I supported Trump the first time in 16, it was for his policies. I have no use for the man or his mouth, and I never have. But if I think his policies are good, that's what I care about. His mouth, well, I, is, I know, unre- his I know, mouth is unrestricted and always has been. Well, I know you think you can separate the two. I know I can. The man from the policies. I know I can. Maybe in your mind. Yeah, well, Well, in your mind I can't, so what's the difference? Well, in my mind, it all comes as one package, and it comes as somebody who is definitely not mentally stable, not qualified for president of the United States. Then I'd suggest you don't vote for him. Well, that you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I, I know. You know. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> um, you know, Art. Art. There have, in our history, there have always been con men, snake oil salesmen. You know, P.T. Barnum types. There, there have always been hustlers and con men around. Yep. And let um, me remind you of something. <laughs> P. 
P.T. Barnum built a huge empire. Yeah. Quite successfully. Yeah. Well, and so, didn't he say ne never underestimate the intelligence of the American public? Well, no, they were entertained. Um, they paid for what they wanted to see. They wanted to be entertained, and Barnum was right there. And he was right. Well, There's a sucker like, born every moment. <laughs> you know, he yeah, was well, absolutely right. Well, like I said, there have always been con men. But I thought the American public was a little more grounded and could see through, you know, a fast-talking, slick, used car salesman a little better than this. Uh, ask I yourself mean, this, then, <laughs> if you think that. Why were all those slick, used car salesmen so successful? Because they tell people what they want to hear. And because people fall for it. Because <laughs> yes. that's, the na yes. that's the nature of the beast. <laughs> if you think you're getting something for nothing, we jump all over it. Come on, you know that. That's the nature of the that's the nature of the human. Unfortunately, well, I th I think I think a big part of Trump's popularity is his celebrity. I I, I think that can't be underestimated. Well, I'm, not, but, I'm not underestimating that by any <laughs> means. I mean, you know, he held forth on television for a long time, and developed yes, his did, personality. People, you know, and listen, uh, you know, at the time. Going back to 2016, that's part of why he got elected, because oh, def people definitely. looked at him as somebody who's going to shake things up and not take any guff from anybody, and that was part of his attraction. No two ways about it. But then again, part of his then again, everybody, his then then again, I have said many times. A lot of voters in this country are very shallow. They don't vote on uh, on the issues, if you will, uh, which is why I've said well, that we may be ripe for a third party, but it would have to be led by a charismatic individual. You know, Robert Kennedy Jr., for example, may be saying a lot of the things people want to hear, but he's not very charismatic. So no. he's not going to win. He'll get he's he's doing pretty well actually. He's getting a pretty good percentage of the voters' interest. Where he gets those votes from, that's to be seen. But the the reality is, it's going to take. Let me see if I can put a name to it, which will 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 simplify the argument. It's going to take a Barack Obama to bring a third party to prominence, because Barack Obama, whether you like his policies or don't like his policies was a dynamic speaker, an excellent speaker. And that's part of what got him elected the first time because of his address yes, to the Democratic National Convention four years prior. He became a rock yes, star sir. in the party. Yes, but he, Obama also had a message of hope and contrast that with Trump, well, but, who has a message that America is in decline and well, things are terrible uh, here. Yeah, but understand, and, understand and this, and Carl. And the military and the government, the courts, Carl, everybody's against him. Carl, understand this. There are a lot of people who feel that way. Whether you're not or not doesn't yeah. make any difference. There are a lot of people who are feeling that this country is in a decline. And they yes. look to him and, and as someone Trump, who can reverse it. So that's well, that's what it's that's to. what politics. Well, he's you don't going, know that. He's, or he's going to exploit it for his own gain. Wow. The division. He, you can he view does, it that he's way. Not interested. He's not interested in healing any wounds. He's talking about retribution. Okay. Being a dictator on day one. Then don't. He's not talking about healing or hope and well, change. Don't vote for him then. That's all I can tell okay, you. Okay, if you say if you say so, Art, <laughs> I, I won't. Don't vote for I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, right now I'm gonna tell you, Carl, don't was, vote for him. <laughs> I was on the fence. I was on the fence, Art, but it, you, you pushed me over. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay, right. <laughs> all, all right, right Carl, I appreciate so. it. Take care. Bye bye now. All right, we're gonna take a break, come back, we'll get to uh let's see, Gene and Greg when we return. Finding the right home. 
Hi, everybody. What a beautiful morning. Terry Henney broadcasting from the Anderson Enrichment Center, where the Art and Garden Festival is going on. You know, it's become a summer tradition in the heart of Saginaw, the Art and Garden Festival. This is the 19th annual event. Uh, Starts at 10 o'clock, so uh, it's just opening up right now. It'll go until 3 o'clock this afternoon. We're located at 120 Ezra Rust Drive here in Saginaw. We're looking at art fair, art and garden vendors are here, all day art and gardening events going on. Admission to the festival is free. And of course, we've got food trucks too, and a silent auction. We're looking at over 40 art and garden festival vendors. They're gonna be selling plants, original art, including painted glassware, pottery, jewelry, native Michigan perennials, ferns, and many other items for the home and the garden. Our broadcast brought to you today by the folks at the Frankenmuth Credit Union. Make them your hometown financial solution. You can find out more by going to frankenmuthcu.org. More reports coming up. All right, Terry, we'll chat with you later. Thanks for joining us today out at the Anderson Enrichment Center. All right, uh, let's get back to our phones on WSGW. Gene is in Bay City. Good morning, Gene. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I was out in the kitchen when Scott was talking, and I just caught the very, very end of what he was saying. Uh, but, of course, I've listened to him many, many times. Um, I wish I was a better speaker, and I wish I knew the Bible better than I do, but I'm going to try and explain my feelings. Um, <clears throat> Scott talks mostly from the Old Testament. Now, as a Christian, Christians believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and took away our sins. Mm-hmm. And so we are to believe his teachings. Now, one of the main things he taught was to love one another as God loves us. And as one of the main prayers says, uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. That means we are not to hold grudges and be try to get vengeance on other people. We are to f- to forgive each other because we all sin, all do mistakes and do things wrong. So for God to, to forgive us, we are to, to forgive others. And vengeance is an, is an evil thing at this point. Now, I believe he said... Pray for your love one another and pray for each other. Pray for your your enemies and do good to those that hate you. If you pray for your your enemies, God will pour hot ashes on their head, and God will say. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, and you are to put vengeance into God's hands. If somebody is doing something evil, that God God said it is up to him to punish those people. That's not up to us if we are really Christian. And yet we're also taught he's a merciful God. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. We are also taught that he is a merciful God. Right, right. A forgiving and, God. Uh, and the thing when you, if you are a Christian, really it is, isn't good to go back into the Old Testament. Because if you believe in Jesus Christ, you have to believe in his Well, here's, yeah, his, wait a minute, Gene. Wait okay. a minute, Gene. You can't get to Jesus Christ unless you go through the Old Testament. I don't know why, but I'm having a hard time hearing you. Okay, what I said was, you cannot get to Jesus unless you go through the Old Testament. Absolutely. Jesus was a Jewish rabbi. Yeah. But 
the thing, the point that I'm getting to is vengeance belongs to God. We are to for, to forgive our yeah. enemies and let God take care of the vengeance. Well, you and know, the, the you thing know. the thing about what what worries me about Trump is it's not just that that he wants so much vengeance, it's that he stirs up hate and vengeance in other people. And, and like with Fauci, the, you know, he's a medical man, and, you know, he he made decisions on what he thought was right and changed his decisions when, when circumstances yep. and more knowledge came. And Which is what I would expect from leaders. Absolutely. So. And right. and the and the, the he was talking the other day, and he, he, because there's so much hate and vengeance now, you know it's pitiful to see these men almost cry because their wives and their children well, I'm gonna, are getting I'm, death threats. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it to a close this way by saying to you, don't mistake serious political differences for vengeance. They're not the same. There are people with very serious political differences and disagreements. That is the right, yes. But that's not vengeance. Well, when when you if you truly listen closely to what Trump says, he is planning on getting vengeance on all the other politicians and Newspaper men and and you know anybody. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you think that there are people on the other side who have been vengeant against him? How how many? No, 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 no. No, Don't answer a question with a question. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't get that quite right. Okay, so are there not people on the other side of the political aisle? who are demonstrating vengeance against Trump? They're, they're afraid to ha- have him go into power. Well, that's because, not what I'm asking all, you. Haven't they gone the after hate. him? Haven't well, they gone after him with a vengeance? Not not so much out of hate as if they, they don't want him to have power because of what he's... He's saying he's going to do it. So, in other words, if, worst, it's, if you don't want somebody are, to have power, it's okay to have vengeance against them. It works both. What I'm pointing out, Gene, is it works both ways. His well, mouth it's, is it's, his uh, mouth is we, louder than you, theirs, but their actions you, demonstrate how they feel. But can you ever remember in the past having wives and children and grandchildren? being threatened with death, or the vice president being threatened with death? Have, uh, have, has that happened before? Yeah, there's been duels. They've shot each other, but that's a long time ago. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, well, I got to go. But everybody read your Bible. All right, Gene, you. good enough, thanks. Bye-bye now. Bye. Now let's go to Caro now, and we'll talk to Greg and Carol. Greg, good morning. Good morning, Art. Morning. When are you going to have somebody on uh, on your show from the state of Michigan to answer why these local oil companies are allowed to raise their gas prices? Like over here in Carroll, they were three oh seven the other day, and they jumped to three sixty nine. That is a 20% increase. Yeah, that's pretty healthy. Overnight. I didn't know anybody was you know at 307 because it's been 360 yeah, something. Around. Here's the thing. It's been 360 around here for a long time. It's just now beginning to subside a little bit. Well, it's it was 307 till yesterday. They jumped it to 369. That's 62 cents a yep. gallon. Yep. And that's 20%. No, I mean, everybody needs gasoline to go here, go there, go to work, whatever. Go to the doctor, go to the dentist. I mean, 
if you walked in the grocery store and they had a sign up that says, well, we got a 20% premium today. Yeah. Well, you know, listen. You know. I I, I, I will try and find someone, but I, I know what the answer is going to be. It's a commodity, and it varies in price. But I'll give you an example. I was in Bridgeport coming through Bridgeport yesterday, and I needed gas. One gas station was at 369. Across the street was at 324. I know. Guess where I bought That's my gas. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Guess where I bought my gas. So that was, so they were going to go up 45 cents. But over here, it was 62 cents. Well, no, the one, the one, the 369 had been that way because we've had 369 around here for a long time. It's only now you recently know? beginning to come down. Oh, so it's. I'm just yeah. saying. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's one of those. So cool. it's, a, it's one of the pricing of gasoline is one of those great mysteries of life. I mean, you look, you look at the wholesale price. Did the wholesale price jump yesterday? Twenty percent. I don't think so. No, but I don't know why that station would have three oh seven when nobody was at anywhere near that. I mean that that yeah, well, that was the more unusual. I tell you, the three sixty nine was not unusual. The three oh seven was unusual. I mean, even out of town, at twenty four and forty six, they were down to three fifteen. You know, I mean, Mayville even was down to three. Yeah, well, for some reason, your fuel I mean, in that part of the state is cheaper than it is around here. I have no idea why. You know, I it just don't justify the sixty-two cents. Yeah, that's tough. To, that's to tough to swallow. That, that's twenty percent. Like I said, if you went yeah. to the grocery store or went to the car dealer, and they says, "Hey, yeah, got your car ready," but oh, we're twenty percent uh, premium today. We'll we'll work on getting somebody. We'll see if we can find somebody I mean, to talk about it. Who would they talk to? Dana, Dana Nessel, or whatever, or yeah. Or, the attorney general. She's the attorney general, right? Yeah. All right. Right. We'll see what we can do. But, All yep. right. Good Thank night. you very much. Great, Greg. Thanks. Bye bye now. Take a break. We'll come back. We'll get to Will and Bob when we return here on the Art Lewis Show. Maximize your sugar content this. Now we're back with you here on WSGW. Let's talk to Will. Good morning, Will. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'd just like to see if I can put to bed those uh, discussions between Scott and Gene. And what i like to say is that, you know, if a man or woman goes to synagogue on a Saturday or church on a Sunday, and Monday comes or Tuesday comes along, and it happens to be voting day, and they go and vote for an individual that is totally opposite or against what they believe, what sense does that make? You have to vote your convictions. You well, can't you go to do. church or synagogue and then go vote for somebody that believes the opposite of what you do and then walk out with a clear conscience. Well, wait a minute. Now. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me ask a question about that. Because I hear what you're saying, but let me set up a scenario. All right? You, and I have no idea what your religion is, so we're just gonna, we're just going to assume some things here, all right? Okay. Uh, let's say a voter uh, is a Christian. And believes in certain things. And there are two candidates. One candidate has the same religious beliefs as that voter, but is diametrically opposed in all other things and how they'd run the country. And candidate B agrees with this person religiously, Or disagrees with this person religiously, but has the much better way of running the country. Do you vote your religious conscience, or do you vote for what's best for the country? Well, you could do both, but if it's against your religion, and like it said, you cannot serve God and man at two, most political candidates will come and say, well, if you do this for me, I'm going to come to your community, I'll build you a bridge, pave downtown for you, put up new street lights and that. That's what we put them in office for. Totally against your conscience, it would be hard for me to go and vote for that person and then come home and say, well, okay, I did that because he's going to do this for me. It's called manna. You know, you can ask well, no, no, Wait, wait, wait. He's not, it's not what he's going to do for you. I didn't put it that way. What's he going to do for the country or the state or the city you live in? 
I don't put a politician in office to tell me how to be religious or to be religious as I am. I put a politician in office to run the government. Well, that's true. But the thing of it is, if he's totally against everything you believe, well, there'd be abortion, you know, all this other stuff that's going on with the kids in the school. They're trying to change their uh, sexual well, identity and whatnot. I cannot vote for him. Well, it's that, impossible. The chances, I would not be able to get up in the morning and look in a mirror and say I did the right thing. The chances are, if somebody would that totally opposed to everything I believe in, chances are pretty good they're not going to have policies that I'm going to believe in either. Well, that's just the thing. That's why you have a choice voting. But like I said, my right. opinion is <laughs> this is my own personal belief. Yeah, and I got it. And that's, listen, and we're all entitled to that, aren't we? That's the beauty of this country. Exactly. But when people go and say they want to vote for somebody because look what he did, and, you know, you judge a man by what he does, not by what he says. A lot of people do uh, anything to get elected, but they'll promise you the moon, but when they get in, so then after a while you look and say, wait, did he do what he said yeah. he was going to do, or His, did he do the opposite? Did history is full opposite? of that. History is yeah. full of that on both sides, and history is full of full of people who were very religious that did just what you say, got in office but, by saying they Yeah, but it something. seems like it's getting a little more aggressive nowadays. They just want to crawl their way into office, and they could care less about part of that. get in. Here's what I'm going to do. Part of that is because of the communications today. I've said this many times, and I'll just use this one example. Uh, in the days of Thomas Jefferson, he was accused of being an adulterer. Well, how did you find out? If you were a citizen in the 1700s, Somebody wrote it down, they put it on a horse, it was delivered to your town, and you heard about it maybe one time because the town crier told you about it. Today, if Jefferson were alive and being accused of an adulterer, you'd be beat over the head with it. You'd hear it a hundred times a day, every day for weeks. That's the difference in how we communicate today and how we've become so polarized because we can't get away from it. That's a shame, I think. I know the problem with the news media is you don't need news twenty four seven. You know, oh, I agree. Stations at uh, six o'clock they'd have the news, and then at nine or eleven o'clock at night that was the end. You'd hear the Star Spangled Banner, whatever. Yeah. They they go off, and you'd hear them again in the morning. And the problem you don't is twenty four seven. The problem is because we don't need news twenty four seven. These twenty four seven news outlets have gone to talking heads and become very political, and you know, we gain nothing from it. That's my personal opinion. Exactly. So. I agree with you 100%. All right, All right Will. You know, talk to be heard, and it's advertisement and dollars and yep. whatever. That's all it's for. And right. it confuses the people. And before you know it, you don't know what the truth yeah. is and what fallacy is. All right. I got to take a break, Will, but I appreciate okay. the call, friend. Thank you. Bye bye okay, now. Bye bye. All right, Bob and Michael, hang on. We'll get to you next. We'll also hear from Terry Henney at the end of this break. Get everything for your next project. And a little bit earlier, we're broadcasting today from the Anderson Enrichment Center. Uh, the uh, area back behind, well, I should say to the south of the Enrichment Center, that is our Art and Garden Festival grounds. Saginaw's Summer Tradition in the Heart of Saginaw, the 19th annual event. The nice thing about it is admission is free. There's more than 40 art and garden festival vendors here. They're selling their plants. They've got uh, painted glassware, jewelry, pottery, ferns, many other items for the home and the garden. They also have garden lectures going on. And returning this year, a peony show and competition. Great opportunity to showcase your favorite bloom and compete for cash prizes. Again, all a part of the Art and Garden Festival going on at the Anderson Enrichment Center. That's at 120 Ezra Rust Drive. Our program brought to you today, our broadcast, by the folks at the Frankenmuth Credit Union with offices throughout the uh, mid-Michigan area. Make them your hometown financial solution. Find out more by going to frankenmuthcu.org. More reports coming up next hour. The month of June. We're back with you on the Art Lewis Show. Back to our phones. Bob is in Reese. Bob, good morning to you. Good morning, Art. Are you still there? I'm here. 
I almost sound like it cut off. Anyway, um, cup. I'd like to cover a bunch of stuff here, but first, Greg, if gas, if you can buy gas for three dollars and seven cents, buy it. <laughs> Well, he wasn't complaining been, about that. He was complaining about the fact it went up to three sixty nine. Yeah, well, we've been paying forty cents more than Carol in yeah. Reese all along. I had a, an email just since you brought it up. I had an email from John, and it says I had always heard it had something to do with using the subsidy money for the ethanol pickup from the local ethanol plant. The trucks take a gas at a discount to the stores on the way to pick up the ethanol as a backhaul. So, mm-hmm. not sure how accurate it is, he says, but that would explain why the gas prices are going up. Anyway. That could be explain that. Could be. That could explain why gas is cheaper in Carroll. Well, yeah, part of it is transportation, and, and that would sure. explain it. All right. Wouldn't explain okay. why it went now, up, though. <laughs> do you remember what the price of gas was three years ago this time of year? No. Uh, was that the $5 gas or was that the cheaper gas? Yeah, it was, yeah. I, I remember 515 Yep. 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 What, who caused what? Who caused that? Donald Trump? No, the world market. Yeah, because... Joe Biden cut suspended drilling. I'm getting an echo in my phone here. Mm, how about anyway, now? There you go. There. Okay. So, you know, there was a number of things Joe did when he got into office. I don't know how many orders he signed the first day and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's what caused all this problem. Another thing, and the thing with Carl and Jean, they have this, um, whatever it is, angst against Donald Trump. But just look at the facts. When he took office, there that we were living in a stagnant economy for eight years. And President Obama said, you just have to accept that those jobs are never coming back. And a lot of those jobs came back under Trump. The next thing, there was no war in Ukraine, and the Middle East was fairly quiet. I'm going to stop you there, because Biden did not cause the war in Ukraine, nor did he cause the Gaza conflict. You know, how he deals with it, maybe, how, how he deals with it would be a subject for discussion, but he didn't cause them. He gave Iran, you know, billions of dollars, and they took that money and armed Hamas. That's what happened. The other thing, when Putin lined up on the border, Joe had six weeks to do something. And, you know, you can do flyovers. You could do a lot of stuff. He he uh, okayed that Nordstrom pipeline, which gave Putin a lot more money to wage war with. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Results. The results of Joe Biden being in office, I believe I heard something the other day, over 350,000 Russian soldiers killed. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you the I same thing. Lo- no, I'm no, gonna, just I'm, let me talk, Art. Well, let me talk. You let Carl you gotta, talk a long time, and all he did was talk about how bad Trump is. I want to tell you that the Ukraine did not get invaded under Donald Trump. Wars got stopped. They didn't get started under Donald Trump. All right. The economy got better under Donald Trump. Okay. The border got closed under Donald Trump. That I'll now, agree. Okay, right, you got now, you got twenty Carl, seconds more. Carl Carl is uh retired and he must be well off that he doesn't have uh, the economy doesn't hurt him or whatever, but um if you go out and you look at the young people, they're working two jobs, trying to keep their households going and stuff. The, and one, the ones that want to work. Yeah, and 17% right. inflation. That all happened under Joe Biden. Okay, we got Thank you, Bob. You. Thanks. At least I got to say the record. All right. Set the record. All right. Thank Bye-bye. you very much.
And our last caller is going to be Michael in West Branch. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Art. How are you today? I'm fine. Great. A couple of weeks back, you had a caller, a veteran, and bless him for his service. But he was disgusted by Donald Trump's, uh, he called it mocking of John McCain. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. his impression. I'm not, I remember it being more or less he was disrespectful and he was inarticulate, which oftentimes he is. Because he said he, that he preferred veterans that didn't get, you know, yeah, get caught yeah, and, and weren't captivated. And I criticized but that I, remark heavily back in the day. Yeah, it, it wasn't. Again, it was, it was inarticulate. It was it was disrespectful, and you shouldn't have said it. But my my point to to, the, to him, any veteran or any American, is this: um, did, this is do his words have they caused any deaths? And this is how I compare Biden to to Trump. When Trump was in office, he told the Taliban, uh, according to some reports, that if you harm a hair on, on one of our, our servicemen's heads, I'm going to bomb you into, into the last century. Right. And, and, and he's also, uh, according to reports, had a conversation with the leader of the Taliban during the negotiations and saying, hey, um, this is, they, sent him, they sent him a photo of where he was. It was building. It was in. He, the, guy didn't, the, the Taliban leader yeah. didn't know what he was. Yeah. He, but but anyway, he's giving the impression, hey, if you, if you do that, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna you know again bomb you, okay? You just vaporize you. So it's peace through strength. I'd say that how many Americans died from Biden being in office? Thirteen Americans when they got out of there. Thirteen Americans died. Yeah, and he went against. He, he went. Hold on. Yeah, exactly. So his his generals told him, "Hey, I want you to leave 2,500 American soldiers behind to protect things." Yep. He went. He 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 did not no. listen to his generals. Yeah, the go ahead. clock is working against us here, and I'm going to have to let I'm you done. go. However, uh, right. I, I just want to say that I fully agree that you you have peace through strength. No two ways exactly. about it. Exactly. Got to run because I'm out of time here, but we'll do it again. Right. Or, yeah, we got to do that. All right, we'll do Thanks, it again. Sir. We'll Thanks. do it again. Bye-bye Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye -bye. We're proud to make... That'll do it for the Art Lewis Show for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more. Uh, stick around for Focus. We'll continue with open phones. We're also going to talk a little bit about UFOs coming up. Broadcasting from the...